All right, we're here in the basement over here at Chicago Music Exchange, and it is an extreme honor for me to have these guys here, Joel Patterson and Andy Brown. And um, this is, you know, a guitar-oriented channel or whatever, so we'll, we'll, we'll definitely talk about gear. But we also like to tackle important and oftentimes very controversial issues. So um, let's just get this one out of the way right off the bat. Um, how do you guys like your hot dogs? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, that is a Chicago-centric question there. Uh, yeah. I like them anyway. I like them anyway, when they're... I'm drunk. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I like rice cakes better, though. <laughs> rice cakes? I haven't had a Chicago hot dog in a long time. Definitely very pre-pandemic, I'll tell you yeah. that. Yeah. That's very true, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm from South America, so I like ketchup and mustard. Yeah, which is it's okay. We're not, I'm not one of those guys that gets mad about that. That's fine. Wow. Yeah. Some okay. people I know, though, you might we, not know. I mean, neither one of us grew up here, so we don't quite have that, you know, hardcore thing. Floor cover, Andy. Sorry. Cool Chicago I grew up in guys. New York, man. I, I like them New York style. You know? yeah. Got it. Got Sorry. it. Okay. I'm from Wisconsin, so we'll take uh, any sort of sausage you put in front of us, any sort of hot dog product, yeah. So okay. I like, well, uh, the only works. Chicago thing that I like is probably Malort. I, uh, I'm maybe... trying to segue into the Green Mill here. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's yeah. A, that's a great segue. <laughs> I think the Green Mill was a place that got the whole Malort thing started again. I kind of saw it happening back, you know, 20 years ago when I started playing there. That was like their thing. But a lot of bars are taking credit for like uh, the whole Chicago Malort thing. But I think it's the Green Mill that kept it uh, kept it going. You know. Well, you, you know heard it here started. first. Malort, <laughs> the uh, Joel Patterson trio featuring Andy Brown, Monday nights. At the Green Mill, starting at 8 p.m.? Yeah, 8 to midnight are the new, slightly earlier hours at the Green Mill. Yeah, we like it. It's good on a Monday. a little bit about these guitars because they're very special guitars. Are they Les Pauls? Yeah. <laughs> we were joking that everybody in a bar that comes up to you asks you, oh, well, here's your Les Paul, you know. And that's always an L5, right, when somebody right. asks what that is. But that is a, an original. This is a Gibson Tau Farlow uh, from 1965. So it's a rare bird. It's a rare bird. I think they made a total of 217 total. And uh, I don't know, I like it because I always think of it as like a L5 shaped 175. You know, it's mm. plywood top like an ES175, but it has the L5 shape and it's sort of thin, a little bit thinner, you know, than an L5 or an ES175. I wish Gibson would have made more guitars with that width. I love that. It's like a guild yeah. width. That, uh, I think yeah. the Johnny Smith was the only one, that and the Barney Kessel. The signature models, for some reason, all had that. 
uh, width, I think, when they realized people actually stand up and play guitar now. Mm -hmm. They didn't think they would, but... Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's amazing to me that the model never took off because it's such a practical yeah. model, like a plywood, mm -hmm. L5 shaped guitar, you know. Just a couple of cheap plywood guitars here is basically yeah, what, about, what we have what here. What are you looking at there? What's this thing? This is basically a 175 with a paint job. Uh, it's a 295, 56, 295. It's pretty original other than the uh, little things I did here. I like a tunematic and uh, found an old Bigsby to put on it. Everybody always asks me, is that an original Bigsby? I don't think I've ever seen a 295 with an original Bigsby. I don't really think that exists. There wasn't a lot of original Bigsby's going on guitars till the 60s. Right. Uh, Gibson wise. But, Looks um, good with a Bigsby though. Yeah, and I found an old beat up uh, gold one. It's one of the earlier ones. But um, this guitar, you know, has been my main gigging guitar forever. And um, I don't really even think about it. You know, people are like, oh, you're playing the original 295. That's cool, you know. But uh, it, this one has been through so much with me and so many gigs and so many different setups and so many different, a couple of different fret jobs and everything, you know. It's just kind of a part of me. But it's good for all the music I play, you know, jazz and, uh, and blues and. Chad Atkins, Rockabilly, whatever you want to play on it, you know. Hey, come here. Get in, get in here. Come here, kids. Your big chance. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure I have much to say, to be honest. So, 
you're speaking just to don't my play lapel. whatever you do because I, I don't play guitar anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Guys. This is, by the way, his dream guitar. That is always one of the two. I see the way he looks at it when he comes <laughs> comes out to our gigs. <laughs> the drum but uh, Nathaniel, what's an honor? This is two of the no, best guitar players in the world. No, yeah, right here. With, with you guys here, That's like why I'm sticking to steel. The most guitar talent we've ever had in this room at the same time, for sure. Wow. This is very That's exciting. Cool. Speaking of guitars, what is this thing? Uh, well, you know, people ask me that all the time. We we play every Monday at the Green Mill. That's kind of why Andy and I got together and started this new new band. Decided to join join forces. Uh, and I want to do, let's do kind of a jazz and then let's dabble in some western swing, you know, let's just play all this crazy guitar stuff. Uh, so I started bringing the steel out and that's why it's it's been so fun to play with Andy because he just plays the perfect accompaniment for whatever, wherever I want. And I was like, oh, I can play steel now. I have this, you know, we can do twin parts and harmonies and Texas Troubadours stuff and Jerry Bird, Buddy Emmons and everything. But this is a steel. It's not a pedal steel. I do play the pedal steel, but in this band, I just stick with this more traditional straight steel sound. They say straight steel, console steel, lap steel. It's essentially a lap steel, just on a, a console, but it's, a, I believe, a mid-50s uh, Rickenbacker.
do you still find yourself like being inspired and listening to things and trying to incorporate into your set or trying to take licks from here and there and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, it, every week we're like, hey, we gotta choose two songs, you know, what do you, yeah. what do you got, you know, and he'll suggest something and then we scurry to kind of learn a little harmony parts and, yeah. uh, you know, Andy's a lot like me where he just never satisfied, so um, I'm always adding these weird steel tunes and then trying to incorporate him and come up with a little harmony. We should sit down and practice some harmonies, though, one of these days, that would, uh, but it's tough when you're on the go, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, you try to always be learning new stuff, too. Yeah. I mean, I try to be kind of, it's like, for me, it's like taking my vitamins, you know, like my aesthetic <laughs> vitamins, you know, I gotta get it, I gotta get a dose of it. Yeah. And then if I don't, I feel very stale and yeah. uninspired. And if I do get a little practicing or hearing a new recording or a new yeah, phrase absolutely. or chord, I, everything feels energized. I have such an endless list of tunes, I, oh, I'll get around to learning that someday, so it, it never ends, you know how it is, you know, it's hard to pick your style and, and go go for it. You almost have to do that because there's just too many things, you know, and you know how guitar players are, if you hear one lick that you don't know that somebody else plays, you're like, wow, yeah. wait a minute, that guy is way better than me, he knows that one, you know, that happens to me every Monday uh, at the Green Mill, but... recommend it. I'm there almost every Monday yeah. and it's just awesome to, to see it. Guys. Yeah, it's awesome Appreciate to see it live. I mean, it's such a, and all the Green Mill, obviously, a legendary place. So. Yeah, everything, that room sounds so nice, especially we play this style of music with these little lamps. We use the same little setup today that we do at the Green Mill. You know, I just use a little Prince and Reverb in there and it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a great honor to play with him and hear, like hear an original Tel Farlow. I mean, you don't see that every day. Mm -hmm. 